episode 13 <clears throat> Trev TV I'm the Trev but you knew that of course you did that's why you're tuning in I have tomorrow's episode yeah there'll be another video tomorrow which is fine I'm okay with it I hope you are too I hope that's a Seahawks bear by the way and it is Haley she did kind of inherit it I've had this before Haley but it's hers now. So, and I did add a new wall ornament. That is a 2019 calendar. So, it isn't quite technically December 1st yet. We're only 45 minutes away from that. But I figured, hey, it's good enough time as any, right? Right. I'm glad you agree. Story time. Not quite the Flashback Friday segment. I, I'm still up in the air on that one, but I figured today is a good day for a story. Since I did promise you I'd tell you stories. So today, I'm going to tell you about the first time I got high. So for this one, I'm taking you a, a ways back. Back to when I was 15. That was the first time. I got high. It's strange. I started smoking cigarettes at 13. I started drinking at 14, which is another story, by the way. And I started smoking weed at 15. So that's almost 25 years. Damn. <clears throat> but anyway, I was 15 years old. And I'd already turned down smoking weed twice before that with a guy I considered my best friend at the time. I already said no twice. So when the third time came around, I was like, okay, why not, right? What else could go wrong? And I'll explain that. At that time, me and my best friend at the time, we, were, we weren't wanted by the, by the police. There were people who looked like us and wore the same coats as us. I had a green flannel. He had a three-quarter length leather trench coat because trench coats were kind of a thing. It wasn't like a piece of shit trench coat. It was a leather trench coat, an actual leather trench coat, which he got from his dad because his dad ran a pawn shop. So, hey, that was cool. That's where I got my Georgia Tech jacket from. But anyway... The two people who were the same height as us and wore the same coats as us were wanted for murder. So we were already naturally paranoid at this point. And it was, it was November, and typically winters in November, in Edmonton anyway, can be chilly. This year it was particularly mild. I'm piecing together what I remember of it because I don't remember much past 20 or before 25. My member berries are a complete blur. But that's another time, another time for another story. So yeah, I'm piecing this together as best as I remember it. But I do remember that we were hiding because dudes who look like us were wanted for murder. But we knew we had to go out. We hadn't we hadn't really done anything in four days except stay home. That's all we did. We went through our coats and made sure we were wearing other coats to school when we were going to the, to the mall, when we were going to 7-Eleven, because we used to go to 7-Eleven all the time, every day, for Slurpees and a pound of Mojos. I don't know if you know what Mojos are. If you do, hit that like button for Mojos. <laughs> we hadn't done any of that in four days. And when you've, had, when you've had Slurpees every day for at least a year, you kind of get a dependency on them. And we were getting the shakes bad, real bad. So we decided, fuck it, we're going to wear different coats. We're going to stand out. So we were wearing coats that were full of color. I was wearing my Georgia Tech yellow jackets, leather jacket, which his dad gave me. And it was a nice leather jacket, like... Black, yellow, white, plus the giant B on the back. And he wore just a, just a typical basic 
puffy winter coat. I don't know why. I mean, it was particularly wasn't wasn't warm, but it wasn't chilly. It wasn't cold, so we get away with just wearing casual jackets. So he met up, and the first thing he says to me is, "I got something for us, man." I'm like, "Okay, cool. What is that?" He's like, "Well, let's walk a bit. Let's go to the store first. Let's get what we have to get, and then we'll go for a walk." He's like. You don't want to go hang out in the basement because, I mean, who knows if we're going to get arrested. I, and he brought the points like, we're wearing different coats. They're looking for guys with the same coats we already have. It's like, okay, I'm going, I'm trusting you on this. <clears throat> so we went to the 7-Eleven. We got our Slurpees. We got our bag of mojos. We went for a walk. And where the 7-Eleven was, was on 50th Street and 118th Ave. That's already Skid Row. Like, so you can imagine, you know, some of the houses I grew up in. That was already Skid Row. So it's like, okay, well, let's just go towards Ada. Ada Boulevard is like the rich bitch territory of Edmonton. All the mansions are there. Plus you got the River Riverview. So it was pretty sweet. So we went for a walk. On the way there, we we're talking other kinds of shit. Like I was totally, I totally forgot up until we got a little further that he'd said he had something. Fix, focus, fix. But we were talking other shit. We were talking music. We were talking Sailor Moon because we were huge Sailor Moon fans at the time. My my guilty crush was Sailor Mercury. Sorry, <laughs> his was Sailor Mars. I should say enough about our personalities, I guess. And anything that we were talking about, I mean, music was always a big influence to us. I mean, we were in a band that we, well, we said we were in a band, but I don't think we really did much. We practiced a lot. We did a lot of covers, but I never gigged with them, which is a shame. Might have been a great gig. <clears throat> but anyway, we get to the, the point where you're turning off into Ada Boulevard. When it clicked on me, it's like, hey. He said he had something. So I says, hey, you said you had something. What, what do you got? And he pulls out the baggie. And it's already got three pre-rolled joints. He's like, I got us some weed, man. Like, oh, where'd you get that? From my dad. Hey, I'm not complaining. Did you steal it or did you give it to him? No, he gave it to me. He sold it to me for 20 bucks. Sweet, sweet. I think what was what happened was his dad kind of said, "Hey, give me twenty bucks. I'll give you this." Like he gave him more than twenty bucks, twenty dollars worth. It's like, go meet up with Trev because I know you two haven't gone out in days. And he, I, I imagine he knew because he he was huge on the news, and the fact that you know the murders happened not too far not too far from where he worked. I think he kind of clued in and said, "Hey." Get out of the house. Go do something. You know, have fun, whatever. I mean, if this helps, this helps. <clears throat> so he brought it out. I remembered that I had said no to him twice already. And I thought about our per current predicament. It's like, I know it's a huge case of mistaken identity, but I'm already paranoid as fuck. He's paranoid as fuck. That's another $2 to the swear jar, Trev. What's the worst that could happen, right? It's like, okay, well, let's get closer to the golf course. And then we'll figure out what to do with all that. He knew what he was doing. I didn't. But we were talking about it. And like, yeah, no, Dad says this is fresh off the boat, right out of Jamaica, and yada, 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 yada. I'm like, cool. I didn't know left from right when it came to marijuana at the time. So for him to tell me that it was fresh off the boat from Jamaica, I don't know if he was just talking shit, if his dad told him shit, or if that actually was off the boat from Jamaica. I don't know. We got closer to the golf course, and he pulled it out, pulled out the first one, and he says, well, we can start this now, or do you want to start with a cigarette first? And I was like, well, we just finished a cigarette. <clears throat> he says, yeah, by the time we finish this, though, we'll want another one. <clears throat> okay, well, let's just start it up. And when we finish it, we'll see if we want to smoke again. So he lights it up, he hits it, 
He does about two, three, four, and I'm like, you gonna pass that thing now, or what? Oh, fuck, I'm bogarting. Yeah, you are. Passes me the joint. That first hit, I inhaled. I went for another one. I inhaled that. I didn't think much of it. Had another one, gave it back to him. He did his thing, he passed it back. It was maybe... Oh, joint like that. I know this doesn't really do much. Um, there you go. About that big. And maybe about that thick. If it ever, if it ever focuses. But as thick as this, as this. So it wasn't the biggest. It wasn't the fattest. But by halfway. I'm noticing that I'm starting to feel a little bit dizzy. Like, okay, I can dig this, I can dig this. We finish it off. We kind of look at one another, and I already knew he, he had been stoned many times before. This was my first time. He says, well, how are you feeling? I'm like, okay, I guess. You know, a little dizzy, yada, yada. You want another one? Okay. So he sparks up the other one. Repeat the pattern. Yada, yada, yada. By about halfway through, that first joint, which is fresh off the boat from Jamaica, kicked right in. Hit me like a brick. I looked at him, and he could just see that at that moment. I was like, yeah, Trev's just feeling it. And I'm not going to lie. I was feeling it. But be damned if we weren't finishing that second one. So we finished the second one, and like, okay. We look at one another, it's like, it's probably time for a smoke since you said we're gonna need one, right? Yeah. So he pulls out a couple cigarettes, lights one for himself, gives me one, I light it. And I don't know if you know the science behind a cigarette after a joint. What it does is it cuts off the circulation to the brain. It doesn't kill you, but it makes, it makes your brain functions and your thought patterns just a little more slower. And by a little, it really depends all on your mindset. A little could feel like an eternity. A little could be like, oh, okay, two plus two is still four, but what's the common denominator? You know, it all depends on your thought pattern. By then, I was walking so slow, and everything was just kind of, it wasn't like seeing the music. You can't see me. It wasn't like I can see the music, but everything was almost in a wave. Now keep in mind, we're already paranoid as fuck. And we're walking further down Ada Boulevard. I think we get to about 66th Street by that point. There's the sirens! We're both doing the 360. It's like, oh fuck. So now what do we do? Him being him, it's like, oh, don't sweat it. They ain't coming for us. Me being me, it's like, where are we going to fucking hide? We were already paranoid. I was very paranoid at that point, and that only made it worse. So finally, after just a couple minutes, the sirens finally go away. That doesn't me help me calm down at all. I'm still paranoid as fuck. That's another $3 to the swear jar, Trev. So we start walking back towards my place. And he's, and he's like, I still got this third one. I'm like, can, can you give me like 10, 15 minutes? Like, I, I'm feeling two joints right now. Can you give me a little bit? Not that I'm saying no, I just kind of want to breathe. And at then I didn't have the tolerance that I have now. You figure 25 years, 24 years. Next year will be 25 years of smoking weed. It's like two joints like that is, depending on the blend, the brand, and the, and the percentage is nothing now. But I digress. We get probably back to the point where we smoked the second one. So from 66th to about 59th, was pro we Gauge that as our halfway point. He lights up the third one. I'm like, dude, already? 
Yeah, man, fuck you. I don't want to wait. Okay, we're going in deep then. We go through number three. No cigarette again. I mean, I'm already feeling the first one on top of the two joints. We get to my place. And he pulls out what he has left that isn't rolled at this point. And he must have had a good two, two and a half grams. It wasn't a lot in today's standards, but again, for your first time, and you've already smoked about two and a half, almost three grams, you're pretty fucking high at this point. I look at him and he looks at the weed, he looks at the papers, he looks at me. He's like, do you want to learn how to roll? I'm like, I could try. I, I can't guarantee you'll be really good, and I guarantee you. This is no bullshit. My first attempt at rolling a joint sucked ass. That thing was six months pregnant. It was crooked. There was twists. It, it was terrible. It was terrible. So finally, he showed me how he did it, and this is the very amateur way in my mind of doing it you wrap the paper around a cigarette put in your filter and pack it which is I guess a good way for a first timer to do it but that was his technique I imagine his technique along with my technique and I've made a video on it and I can make you another video once I have more weed my technique has grown exponentially in 25 years but I've already told that story but alas that is about the first time I got high. The happy ending to this story, however, is those guys that did look like us, or at least wore the same jackets as us, did get caught the next day. So that was a huge sigh of relief. I went back to wearing my, my flannel coat. He went back to wearing his trench coat. Life was good. That's the happy ending to that story. But I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm glad you let me tell me a story about my past. As I've said, I've debated having a story time slash throwback Thursday slash flashback Friday kind of kind of playlist and if this works well I might actually consider that further because I know I will tell the story of the first time I got drunk and if you don't find my misery in that funny you are not as sadistic as you claim to be just saying keeping it 100% here but I want to thank you for tuning in your viewership always means so much to me always has always will I mean, hell, if it weren't for your viewership, I wouldn't have a video that's almost at 600 views at this point, which I know by a lot of standards is not much. I mean, I'm watching dudes on here that have 100,000 views, and it's not that I don't want to get there. I do, but so far it isn't working yet. So that's why I'm encouraging you. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and give it a like. If you want to, subscribe on the way up. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Trev's TV. You can find me on Instagram at Rockstar Trev TV. So uh, as I was saying in the beginning, this is tomorrow's video. So Melissa will be in that. And hopefully, you know, it'll be, it'll be an entertaining video. One can hope. Um, and then after that is the NHL Board of Governors meeting which means the Seattle vote. And I don't know about you, I am looking forward to this. Very forward to this. It's, for me, it's a life changer. A life changer. And I'll explain it. But in the meantime and in between time, be on the lookout for more videos from the Trev. Later.